Hi, I'm Maydalee Weisman. Thank you for tuning in to my video series. This is a spotlight on Peter Yearwood. He is a nursing home resident in New York City. Peter is also a poet and a filmmaker serving as the manager of Reality Poets through the Advocacy Action Organization, Open Doors, and is also a co-producer and an associate impact producer on the soon-to-be-released documentary, Fire Through Dry Grass. Please stick around after the credits to learn more about Peter's poetry and to hear one of his poems. Thank you. Nobody could go out. Nobody could come in, you know, um, and um, the thing that really teed me off over here was that when they said that, um, okay, well, we're doing this to keep you safe. We're doing this for your own good, for your own benefit, right? Yeah. Sure. So why is it that you are locking us down, healthy and sick people in the same space? Mm -hmm. How is that healthy for me? How is that for my own good? During that time, during the lockdown, I really felt that a lot of things that they were doing was to cover their own butt so that they don't get sued in here. We could go outside if we wanted to, right? But here's the thing. If you even go outside in front of the building for a few minutes to come back in, they sent you straight upstairs to quarantine. Wow. To the COVID unit. So that was like punishment for going outside. My, my, my word, you know. And they, but they, the way they framed it, it was like um, a recommendation. But when you look at actuality, it was like a rule. It was like a law, you know, like, you know, don't go outside or else. Before the pandemic, I used to go to the resident council meetings, right? I used to go to the resident council meetings, but in those meetings, it seemed to me like um, it would go in one year and come out the other because at the end of the day, they'll do what the hell they want to do anyway. I said, All right, you know what? I got to take care of myself in here. It's fair. A lot of, I think a lot of residents probably won't get involved, right? Because for fear of retaliation, like I said, you know this. And, and I think, a lot of families don't get involved because they fear retaliation for their for their loved ones in nursing homes or just the lack of not knowing what their rights are. Because for the fact that you're in a nursing home, right, you are fighting for your life. Your body could be a good, clear day of blue skies, sunshine, but your life is still is what is 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 um what you is your major concern, how you've been treated in it, you know? And, and a lot of times, <sighs> residents, you know, they might try to, to gather, to like round up the troops in, and other, nurse, uh, other residents just won't, won't, won't participate, you know? Um, but I think, I think, you know, getting them over the fear of doing, of, of, of speaking up, speaking for their rights, you know. It, it is their rights, it's their human rights, you know, that you should be treated no less than a human being. During the pandemic, we started this movement called Nursing Home Lives Matter, inspired by Black Lives Matter, because we feel like if this was a predominantly white nursing home, a lot of the things that went on in here, that the devil that gave us better care, you know, we would have got better care than we did. It's like we were disposable. If you had seen any of the of the uh, press conferences that the mayor did during that time, when he was saying that Cola was empty. I can report four new facilities being brought online immediately. The Kohler facility on Roosevelt Island, an H&H &H facility that was empty. But here it is, the mayor of your city doesn't know that you are there, that you are in this facility. 
these seven people are just things empty and will be brought back online in a week. I mean, what is that saying to you? You know, so we had to, this is why we made a lot of noise. We make, and we still continue to do it to let them know, yeah, we're here. We're here. We're very much here. At first, there was a little like hesitation because we were worried about um, um, retaliation, you know. But then we just said, you know what? We got to the point where we said, um, the hell with it, you know. What is it that you can do to us now? Because we are literally fighting for our lives. To our voices and, and, the, um, and the community, you know, we were able to, to connect to our local politicians. But it took them a while to come on board. But when they came on board, that's where a lot of things start happening. You know, we formed our task force which is a little different than, than the resident council meetings, you know. And the task force meetings, um, you actually have accountability, you know. Mm-hmm. You have the your, your, your CEOs there, you know, then you have uh, representatives from, from the borough president's office, the council office, uh, um, the congressman's office, you know. And, HAC, which is like the parent organization that runs most of the nursing homes in the city. You know, this is something that that, that we are asking for, that, that some of the things that we ask for, to, you know, do our advocacy is like a, a seat at the decision-making table. We hope to educate the, the, the public at large on nursing homes, you know, like this is not um, for the elderly anymore, you know, the demographic has changed in nursing homes. You have, you know, younger people, younger people in here, you know, for whatever reason they have to be here, you know. But a lot of the issues that are facing nursing home residents, you know, as far as their care is concerned, will not go away. There's nothing you can do to fix that right now because you, they, the whole system, they have to find a way to fix the staffing issue. If you don't have staff, if you don't have people to give the care, how can the patient get the care? It trickles down because if the the staff comes to work today and they're in a not so good mood or their supervisors just disrespect them, you know, yell at them for whatever reason, you know, if they're having a bad day, then we're going to have a bad day. You know, it's about equality, you know, it's about the respect, it's about dignity. You know, and so yeah, that 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 should be nursing home last matter right there. That's something that we're fighting for right now. That Open Doors is, is advocating for also for those who cannot do that for themselves, for the people that, that cannot speak up for themselves. Now we are aware of the rights. We know what these rights are, right? And now we will implement. We will make sure that that, that everybody else. You know, knows about their rights. You know, um, and it, you know, it's, it's sad to think that some nursing homes don't even have a resident council. They this, they have it, but they don't utilize it. It's not utilized. You know. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that's really, really sad. You know, I just want all the nursing homes, nursing homes across the country, all the other residents to know that there are that there's help out there there's people who are already willing and able to help you who wants to help you if they know about you so let us know about you we would love anybody any other nursing homes watching this video please let's do this we can do this you know i think for too long a lot of us have tried to do this alone and it's not gonna work you know we have to do this together we have to do this together Let's get there together and make that big noise, you know? So hopefully we can get things changed.
when I came to Open Doors and, and, we, and I started, you know, writing a little verse here and there. And when I really got into it was in the, during the pandemic and I, and I found how, wow, this, 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 this is better than talking to a therapist, you know? It's, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, because when you're writing, especially when you're in a situation like that and you're writing, it's, it's like your soul you're putting on paper, you know, it's like all the stuff that's, that you want to get out, out there is out there and then when and, and not only that you put it out there but when you do put it out there and and you see the the positive effect that it has on people it just makes makes everything go away yeah. you know it makes all the bad things to go away hello everybody my name is peter and i would like to share a poem with you today it's a beautiful poem and actually the name of it is it's a beautiful world. Here we go. I have a pretty good idea what beauty is. As the sun rises, it's beautiful. Blue skies are beautiful. Sunsets are beautiful. A newborn baby is beautiful. A baby's first words are beautiful. The sound of music is beautiful. Poems are beautiful. Freshly fallen snow is beautiful. The rhythm of raindrops is beautiful. Rainbows are beautiful. Flowers blooming in the springtime is beautiful. Fruits ready for harvest is beautiful. Vegetables ready for harvest is beautiful. Fishes in the sea are beautiful. Every creature, big and small, is beautiful. Every insect, big or small, is beautiful. Birds are beautiful. The universe is beautiful. What a beautiful world. Thank you. I just want to say a little bit about this poem. You know, because of the world that we live in, we seldom take time to notice all the beauty around us. We mostly concentrate on all the negative things going on in the world today, and rightly so, because it's about survival. Um, but I think if we would only take that time to see the, all the beauty in the world, that maybe we would learn to care more about each other instead of trying to destroy or oppress each other. Because everything on this planet was designed to make us all, to make us all live in harmony. So just take the time and look in the mirror because you are beautiful. Thank you.